There's a lot of data out there representing dialogue between two or more people. This is usually an interview, podcast, meeting, or a sales call. It's super helpful to be able to extract insights from these transcripts. Today, we're gonna look at best practices I've learned while building Thimble, a B2B sales call analyzer. If you wanna see more information about Thimble, I suggest heading over to the Twitter launch or thimbleai.com to see the demo video. Link is in the description. All right, the plug is done. Let's jump into some code. All right, throughout building Thimble, I've learned that there's four key points that I recommend. The first one starts with clean data. Like any good project, you need to make sure your data is well formatted so that your language model can take advantage of it. The first point that I wanna mention here is the name or the role. If you can include the name of the person speaking in your transcript or the company that they're with or the role or whatever it may be, it goes a long way. The second piece is gonna be around the system instructions. Rarely will the out of the box prompt that you get with your summarization tool be the one that you actually wanna use. It's pretty important to be very specific with your language model about which role you want it to take. You only wanna pull for information from the call, meaning you wanna tell the language model, hey, don't make anything up. I don't want you to go crazy here. Just tell us that you don't know. And then finally, the last piece that I found out, which is pretty useful, is you don't really wanna make users prompt anything. I know that chat bots are all the rage right now, but I wanna make my users not need to think about what they need to type in, or I don't want them to have to do prompt engineering. So I try to abstract as much as that away for them and replace it with radio buttons or sliders or whatever it may be. The next thing we're gonna do is import our packages. There's nothing too crazy you haven't seen here before. The only thing that might be jarring is I'm gonna make this display just a a little bit longer or wider so that we can see more text at the same time. And the next piece of this too is these chat prompt templates. It kind of may look like a lot right here, but that's because we're using a chat model and there's different chat prompt template models for uh, each different type of message that we send out over there. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna load up our data. And this is data that you can go check out. This transcript is available to you. It's underneath the data folder under transcripts. And if we take a look at what this content actually looks like, it is a simple transcript of, of a, um, a dummy sales call that I had. And so here we see that Greg, I'm including my company, my fictitious company, it's called Marin Transitions Partner. This is the beginning of the call. I'm talking to a friend and so I'm making sure that the recording is going correct, but then I quickly jump into character. And then my colleague here, Eliza, she's from, she's representing Acme Co. She's a lead buyer at Acme Co. who I'm trying to sell software into. Um, and you can see here that I include, this is, Part of step number one is we're gonna have my name and then we're gonna have the company name that I represent. Same thing with the person I'm talking to. Really helpful to help the language model understand who represents who uh, within your transcript. All right, next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna split our documents again because this um, transcript is too long and we don't wanna run into prompt, uh, problems here. So I'm gonna set up the recursive character text splitter and I'm gonna specify the uh, separator that I wanted to look at first is gonna be the double new line because that is how these different pieces of text are split up here and if they need it, then you can go to the uh, single new line. I'm gonna set a chunk size of 2000 and this may seem kind of big, we're, we're using the chat model so there's actually larger um, token limits and eventually we won't need to worry about this because the token limits will be so big that uh, it won't be a big issue. But either way, I'm putting in the chunk overlap of 250, which means that our chunks will actually overlap by about 250 characters. We'll go ahead and run that. And then let's take a look at a preview. It looks like I have five texts that came out of this one. And here we have a single document and it's just the, uh, a repeat of what we saw beforehand, except in document form. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is make my LLM. And so in this case, I'm gonna use the, oh, it not, doesn't have that. Let me make sure, there we go. I had a hidden cell for my API key. Uh, for, in this case, I'm gonna create the LLM and it's gonna be the uh, chat model, which is why we use chat open AI instead of regular open AI. And I'm gonna set the temperature equals zero, which means it won't be too creative and it won't be too liberal with its responses. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna start with the vanilla load summarize chain. So this is the one that comes right out of the box uh, with uh, Langchain. And if you actually wanted to see what prompts were being used in this chain, you could go ahead and go to Langchain chains summarize map reduce prompt and see that this is is what's being used, okay? So let me go ahead and make that chain, awesome. And at this point, you might be saying, well, Greg, what about the embeddings? Um, we're only doing one call right here, and this isn't a tutorial on embeddings. I have other tutorials on that if you wanna go check that out. But for here, I'm doing it out of simplicity. If you're doing multiple calls or really, really long calls, you may wanna consider embeddings, but that's not the purpose of this video. 
All right, let me go ahead and run that. And then I'm gonna run these, uh, this output. And I did verbose equals true up here, just so you can see what is happening. Uh, if we scroll up to the very top here, we get a prompt that says, write a concise summary of the following. And then we get our pieces of, or our single document of the transcript that we had beforehand. And then what will end up happening is the output will be a concise summary. And then we're finally gonna get a summary of the summaries because we're doing a map reduce. Now, if you wanna find out more information about different chain types, I also have another video on that uh, in the LangChain playlist that you can go check out. But let's like, let's, let this output and we'll see what it says. All right, so we got our output from the model here. Greg from Marin Transition Partner discusses with Eliza Acme Co. about their business, social media presence and the need for social monitoring tool. It's not bad, but the first thing that I noticed here is that it is representing a third party that, or the AI model is representing a third party that's kind of agnostic to what's going on in this um, in this conversation here. However, if I'm making a tool that I want to be beneficial to sales users, I want to instruct the AI, hey, you're on the side of Greg here, the salesperson, and you're going to be a helpful AI bot that's helping them. And so that it takes a bit more of an opinionated, uh, an opinionated stance about how it represents its output here. Okay, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to use custom prompts for this. And the way I'm going to set that up is I'm going to first start with a template and I'm going to start with my map prompt first, which is going to be the first step when we get the original summaries before we get the summaries of the summaries in our combined prompt. So you are a helpful assistant that helps sales rep name. And you'll notice that this is in a token right here. And the reason why I do this is because I want to dynamically place different people's names here. Now, in this instance, I'm only gonna do Greg, but for your use case, you may wanna insert other um, other values there. So that helps Greg, a sales rep at Marin uh, Transition Partners, uh, summarize information from a uh, sales call. Your goal is to write a summary from the perspective of Greg. Oh, that is actually gonna be a mistake. This should be another template there of Greg. Uh, what that will highlight key points that will be relevant to making a sale. Do not respond with anything outside the call transcript. That was one of the key points I mentioned. If you don't know, say, I don't know. And then do not repeat Greg, Greg's name in your output. Um, I found that it was kind of a little emphasizing on that too much, and so I included that one there. And then for the human template, which is the human message, because remember, you need we want the system message and then the human message so we can get an output here. I'm just going to pass the text that comes um, that comes from it. And then with these, I'm going to combine both of them into a single chat prompt template. So we had templates for our individual messages, but now we need to combine them into a chat prompt template. We'll go ahead and run that. And then I'm going to load up the summarize chain. And let's go ahead and run this. All right. And then here's where the cool part happens where we start to input our values. So for the input documents, it's just going to be the text, which is what's going to get put in as a text um, into into this text token right there and then for sales rep company this represents sales rep company up here and it's going to be marine transition partner which is the value it's going to put in and then we're going to have sales rep name which is going to be greg and it's going to go up there so let's go ahead and run this and see what the output is acme co a software company that helps nonprofits grow their business is looking for a social monitoring tool nice so this is a little bit better because it describes the company it describes what they're looking for which is a little bit of that sales flavor that we included in the uh in the prompt there so they estimate that it could enable them close one more deal per month about fifty thousand. says the stakeholders Nice. This is a lot more attuned to the sales use case, which is nice using those custom prompts. All right. Now, say I wanted to have a different output, though, because this is helpful. But what if a salesperson just wants a list of bullet points or they just want one sentence or whatever it may be? Well, I don't want them to have to insert a new prompt to get that output. I want to have them be able to do a promptless change. Now, I'll be writing the prompt, but they won't be. So the way I'm choosing to do this right now, there's probably a bunch of methods, but the one I like that makes the most sense to me is I'm going to define the different options that I want the user to be able to pick from, one sentence, bullet point, short, or long summary. And then I'm going to define a dictionary in Python. Now, what I'm going to do here is my key is going to be uh, just the, one of the options that we had up above. And then the value is going to be a list of bullet points that signify how I want the output to be. For one sentence, I only want one sentence. But for bullet points, I want bullet point format, separate each bullet point with a new line, and then each bullet point should be concise. So now when the user selects this option, whether it be a radio button or a drop down or whatever it may be, they can get these three bullet points without even needing to type them out. So let me run this and so we can get our dictionary. 
go ahead and do that. And then for this template here, we are gonna do the same template that we had up above, sales rep name, sales rep company, okay, et cetera, et cetera, it looks good. But now we're actually gonna do our combined prompt. So that means that when we have our list of summaries, but now when we do the summary of the summaries, we're gonna specify the output that we need here. So the addition I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, add in this piece, which is net new to the combined prompt because we just used the default one beforehand. And I'm gonna say, hey, respond with the following format. And then the output format right here is gonna be the value that is selected by the user up above, okay? So let's go ahead and run this and we'll create our chain one more time. Chat is not, that's because I need to switch this to LLM from above. And then the user selection here is gonna be bullet points. And this value up here represents the same value that is selected right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and run this. But here we have texts that is selected. We have Marin Transition Partners, we have Greg. But then the output format, which is gonna be insert into the token up above, is gonna be our dictionary with the key that is selected of the user's uh, selection up above. Let's go ahead and run that and see what we have. And one of the key parts I wanted to highlight here as well is this is where our combined prompt is gonna be used. And so here's the system message that we had before. and But here now it's getting picked up with respond with the following format. And it's selecting the bullet points that we had below. Now, if we take a look at the output, that's freaking cool because now we have out, now we have bullet point outputs here. So Acmeco is a software company that helps nonprofits grow. Awesome. And we get a bit more detailed information as well. So if we wanted to do one sentence, we could go up here and type in one sentence. Sentence. All right, and we just have one sentence here. So Acmeco is interested in a social monitoring tool, et cetera, et cetera. The sentence is kind of long, but you can go ahead and play with the prompt however you want to make that for your use case. Awesome, well, that is the main uh, part about how to do uh, parsing transcripts and make it a little bit easier on the user for you. If you wanna see uh, more information about Thimble, please head over to thimbleai.com. Link is also in the description. And I'm also really curious to see what kind of ideas you have or what types of conversations would you wanna parse. And so I'd love to see them. And if you wanna share them with me, please do it over at Twitter or at uh, email me at contact at dataindependent.com. We'll see you later.